Hi everyone and welcome to Seven, a webinar series which invites an expert each week to discuss a topic from their area of expertise. And this week we are delighted to have Eileen Durfee as our guest expert to talk about infrared saunas, dehydration and salts. Eileen is a former nuclear plant engineer, inspector, auditor and real estate builder and developer who became sick due to chemical exposure. She suffered from chronic pain, allergies, Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, and a general lack of energy. She found it difficult to live a fulfilling life. She realized that these symptoms were the result of her body not eliminating the toxins around her. She tried a variety of medications, diets, therapies, and many other things to help recover her health. On a quest to heal her body, she discovered what solutions work. And now she wants to use her knowledge and experience to help others. Eileen's journey to good health led to her becoming an inventor and businesswoman. She founded the health company Createx Solutions LLC to create and distribute natural healing products worldwide. Through online web stores, she offers a variety of health solutions, including infrared saunas, air purifiers, ozone generators, and healing food salts, as well as providing consultation as a practitioner in nutritional balance and science. Eileen understands toxic home and work environments and knows firsthand what it's like to suffer as a result. The experience continues to motivate her to create the best possible health solutions to protect family, friends, and consumers like us from our toxic world. Welcome to our show, Eileen. It's fantastic to have you with us. Well, thank you for having me as well. So how did you... Can you tell me your life story? How did you get ill from toxins? Well, I mean, I was almost a miscarriage. And when I was born, my hips were twisted. So I'd Gosh. wear special shoes. And every time I walked, my knee hit my other leg. Uh, I grew nine inches in three months. And I experienced a lot of pain. Uh, my parents took me to doctors and they took x-rays and I mean, I used to have terrible, terrible pain and they just couldn't find anything wrong that would be causing the pain. And yes. so, you know, over the years, then when I was about 17 years old, I was walking in a parking lot and a car ran over me. I flew up on the hood. Wow. I can barely breathe. And it was just stabbing pain in my heart. I couldn't like lift my arms. And so I ran into like a 93 year old chiropractor who'd been here for years. And he adjusted me and he says, you need to see this chiropractor that does exercises to rehabilitate you. So I got involved in that yes. and got, you know, my structure, you know, and proper alignment or closer to alignment to control the pain. But I developed allergies, had Hashimoto's. Of course, my mom was here when Hanford, the nuclear power plant, you know, where they built the, the bomb for Hiroshima. Anyway, they used to release radioactivity straight in the air during the time that my mom was drinking milk and growing up. And so they killed most everyone's thyroid glands around here. So oh. my whole life I've had thyroid problems, had Hashimoto's. I mean, I used to have this lump on my neck where every time I'm swallowing, I'm almost choking. And so I just, you know, the doctors, they would give you, you know, allergy shots or allergy medications or carry an mm -hmm. EpiPen you know, all these things, I developed psoriasis on my, all over my body. My hair was falling out. I couldn't even think. Then uh, I found out that, oh, there's a candida connection, you know, and all these toxins. And so my whole passion has been because the medications didn't help. They caused other problems and I still had issues. So it's like I just had this underlying feeling that, you know, if my body just had what it really needed, if I could detoxify, mm. that, you know, it should be able to function. And so yeah. I just, you know, 
one fast, I mean, Dr. Bernard Jensen stuff and this juice and these things. And I just, it, it grew to cabinets full of everything that at that time, the wellness over the last, you know, 30, 40 years said was good for you or would help with this. It was, so I was just like playing Russian roulette with all these things to try to help my body. And so, you know, it was just a quest. That's how it started out of my own personal pain and anguish. And my mom was also going through a lot of the similar problems. And so together, you know, we just did a lot of research, reading and and being our own guinea pigs. So that's how it started. <laughs> wow, that's quite a travesty, isn't it, to have a pocket of people all around this nuclear plant with similar conditions. So I guess there's a hotbed for finding a solution, isn't it? Everyone's got a problem, they get together and try and find some things that work and compare notes. Now, you've done your own research and you've found ways of resolving problems. Problems like Hashimoto's, we're told, is autoimmune, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, that's what they say. But you are, you are arguing that there, and you're living proof that there are things you can do to combat the yeah. condition. Yeah, I mean, the doctors, you know, they wanted me to be on Levoxyl, which basically gives you circulating hormone. But what they're not looking at is, are your cells permeable? What's the rate of the hormones getting in the cells? Uh, once it gets in the cells, what rate are the, is it combusting at? So the blood work is not enough to determine thyroid status. And so when I found out about you know, tissue mineral hair analysis to determine what you know, the minerals are associated with that, using those together, I actually went against my doctor's advice because he said, don't do iodine, don't do kelp, you know, all these things. And there was a, a mix of things that were recommended on the hair analysis. And then when you do hair analysis, your body detoxifies a lot more efficiently. And so I tell people when you start on a detoxification program, you, you're Imagine this pristine mountain pond where you go on vacation and you see the trout and the fish swimming around. Well, when you go on a detoxification program, it's like jumping in that lake and tromping around. Pretty soon you can't even see the fish because it's just all cloudy. So likewise, on our internal body, we need to put on like a circulating pump. I call that the near infrared sauna. We got to get things moving, you know, coffee enemas to have the filtration system. Cause after all the fish has to live in the water and the same thing with us. And so I just came across a lot of different hacks and I was using products and it was just like, darn it. I wish those guards didn't burn my skin when I was taking a sauna because if you're taking a daily sauna, you know, your phone's going to ring or you're going to be reading, you're going to drop something, reach for your water and, and boom, you're going to burn yourself. And it's like, man, you know, having to get the aloe vera and pamper a, a burn for days was ridiculous and they were heavy. And so it was just through taking good things that worked and made them better to help us get the poisons out of our body faster so, you know, we can feel better. I mean, people go, well, how in the world do you have time to take a daily sauna, do your skin brushing, do a coffee enema, you know, all these things. I'm going, well, you know, if I can transform into superwoman, <laughs> every morning they sell themselves. And because, you know, I had rheumatoid joint pain and just all these things. And I don't have any pain in my body. I don't have any allergies. I mean, at one time I was allergic to everything. And so I really believe it's about getting the toxins out, the right minerals in, and getting energy. Because why just leave your body's energy supply to come from the food you eat? Why not like life hack it? shine a light on you or take some special negatively charged salt or there's just all these things that 
I started coming up with more and more things that work synergistically together. Okay. Okay. Now, what is your health state now with, um, like for Hashimoto's, do you have Hashimoto's? No, I mean, that was blood verified, no more antibodies being produced, uh, normal, you know, T3, T4 levels. Um, I haven't taken thyroid medication since about 2012 now. And uh, all the different blood work and the different things that I've had. I mean, I was in a car wreck um, in 2013 and I actually applied for life insurance, you know, for my business. And so I'm sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, you know, not too long since I had anesthesia and all this kind of stuff from knee surgery. And, you know, they took all my blood work and it's like the insurance agent is going, wow, in the five years I've been here, I've never had a policy issued with the best health rating. Everybody usually gets a tick for this or that. And, he's, and they said, every test we ran on you, it was like you weren't to the far left or the far right. You were like right down the middle on everything. And then when I was in physical therapy, they had this, it's called an S3 machine. It was on a Dr. Oz show that measures circulating antioxidants. So, you, you know, you put your hand on the machine and it, you know, takes a measurement right there. And the rep was there, you're brand new. And I'm like going, oh my gosh, this has got to be bad. You know, I just got out of surgery, put my <laughs> hand on it. And, and I had like 75,000 circulating antioxidants. That's higher than what Dr. Oz had. And, you know, they, the guy goes, man, you're never going to get cancer. What antioxidants do you take? Because they have this machine to sell you antioxidants. I said, well, I don't take any antioxidants. I do my near infrared sauna every day. I do my coffee enema, and both those things flood your body, causing your body to make antioxidants. And so they're like going, wow, you know, and I just say, yeah, I just take, you know, my minerals and my metabolic pack, a few glandulars from my hair analysis, and, you know, the right kind of salt, you know, to shift your body alkaline. And, you know, that was it. So, wow. yeah. Well, let's talk about your, your, what you do in more detail. Now, you've mentioned your sauna before. Your yeah. Sauna. I, okay. I had a far infrared sauna since 2007. And every day, that was kind of like my meditation prayer box. You know, I went in there every day and took like a 45-minute sauna. I had to go out there and heat it up for 30 minutes to get in there. And then because my thyroid was so underactive, you know, it took me so long, 45 minutes to get a good sweat on, but I was getting really good sweat. And when I heard about near infrared sauna therapy, I thought the guy was prejudiced. It's like, yeah, I just spent $2,800 on my sauna and now you want me to get rid of it. Cause yeah, it had high EMF. Oh my gosh. It was blasting me everywhere to do something else, you know? So it was hard. And so I went on a trip with my daughter and grandson. It's like, I didn't want to be without a sauna. So I got myself near infrared sauna light panels. And so before the trip, I take a sauna day one and I'm thinking, man, I'm, I'm not sweating as much. You know, the, the ambient air temperature isn't near as hot. What's going on? Day two, I sweat a little more. Day three, by day three, I had this feeling come over me. I was so light. I felt so clean. I felt so energized. It's like, oh my gosh, it is really better. <laughs> and so then I made the switch, you know, to near infrared. And at first we were making the panels, but they were heavy. We had the problems with the guards. And so then, uh, because I used to teach actually how to read blueprints for nuclear power plant inspectors. And so I my brain sees that it's like I go to sleep with a problem and I see the picture. So mm -hmm. I saw the picture of the sauna fix lamp and then I thought, okay, I'm going to have that made. So then I had it made and we, it took us, gosh, six, eight months where 
I took a non-toxic polymer and mixed it with iron to create the special metal that it's made out of so that it didn't conduct the heat so much so it wouldn't burn you. It's like you can leave that lamp on for 12 hours straight and grab it and not burn yourself. Plus it makes it more lightweight. So the whole lamp fixture is like 12 pounds. And so, you know, it evolved, you know, it went from the lamp and then people are going, well, I really don't want to use the canvas, you know, because again, it's hard to get the temperature up. It's hard to sweat in. And then the canvas enclosures have to be super small. So you almost feel claustrophobic. And then all the canvas out there was non-organic. It was GMO. So, okay, pesticide ready. Let's heat up some pesticides and breathe that in when we're doing our sauna detox. I just didn't like it. And so that's when I came up with my radiant tent panels. I actually started sewing cotton webbing on different sheets and different thicknesses. And it just wasn't working very well. Uh, so I actually hired a company to do it, and we had a, a 4.5 radiant value, you know, panel before, and it worked great. You still had to heat it up, but you could be a little bit bigger than the canvas, and you maximize your phototherapy, so you actually sweat more in that. But then I had some customers going, I lean, I can't sit down, my back hurts, um, you know, I want to lay down and this one lady, oh, she's the inspiration for my current design. Uh, she flipped the sauna because it was four foot by four foot and then five foot high. So you'd crawl in and sit on a stool. Well, she flipped it and put the floor up against the wall and then laid diagonally and then hung the lights on top and laid down and took her sauna. Well, I'm six foot. My son's six foot five. You know, so laying diagonally five feet just didn't work for me. So we just designed it to have some brackets and everything. So it's like a little transformer tent. You know, you use these panels if you're in the stand up, you remove this one, change a bracket, flip it, use a different panel for the lay down. And then we graduated to the R12 insulative panel that has a wood grain look on the outside because people's complaints were I want to lay down and it looks ugly that silver and that red color can we make a curtain to hang over it and all this other stuff and so we started making these films and trying to laminate them on this you know top of the the panel and so we were successfully able to do that and then we went to organic cotton webbing on the outside uh and so it's phenomenal because now it's the only sauna in the world okay that if you're six foot five you can lay down you can stand up you can sit down you can have two people in there laying down but also you don't have to preheat it so you know like if you're busy and you want to take a sauna and then oops i forgot to preheat my sauna you don't do a sauna that day and so with this, you don't have to think ahead. You just get the idea or want to do a sauna, no big deal. Just jump in there. But yeah. also, also, all these infrared saunas, you have to have a dedicated 20 amp breaker with nothing else on the circuit. So you have to have an electrician wire up a special electrical outlet for your sauna. I mean, which I was used to, but this one, if your hair dryer plugs in and works in the outlet, you can take this sauna. Okay. So, I mean, it just, it's just keep on growing. I mean, people that I knew that had cancer that didn't have saunas, I would loan out saunas to them. So here I am. I, I used to have like wood panels and everything. And it, it was just like, it worked. I did it because I wanted to help them. But I thought, how great would it be to have this sauna that requires no tools and give it travel bags so one person can simultaneously carry the tent, the stool, the lamp, everything, and then put it up in 10 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's kind of how the system 
has gone. Um, it's all ROHS certified to European standards. Did you know that the zipper on your pants can have like 50% more lead if you live in America than in Europe? <laughs> I mean, it's like every single thing sourced for this tent is ultra safe. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Right, wow. The, um, now, Doris Weber from the Facebook live stream uh, asked the question. I think you've pretty much answered it. Oh, yes. That. Well, um, what is the difference between cold and hot infrared light for therapy? Which one is better? Well, they have different uses. Um, frequencies, I mean, for Alzheimer's, they now have that brain helmet with LED light. We know that light therapy is healing. Uh, they have the, the red lights that are panels that don't create heat that will actually alter, you know, your skin layers to get rid of wrinkles and look younger and all those things. Those are all <laughs> beneficial. They're all helpful. The right. magic of the bulb, a heat lamp bulb sauna, is the frequencies and the heat and the double the circulation effect. So heat stress is undisputed as being healthy for you. I mean, it lowers blood, you know, pressure, lowers blood sugar. I mean, it does all these things. So that's why heat stress is very good, but cold light therapy is great too. It's, it's just a different application. But with the heat lamp bulb sauna, you're getting frequencies. I just uh, did a, a bulb frequency test and they emit 550 to about 3,400 nanometers of light. So even though they're called near-infrared saunas, you're actually getting red light near, mid, and far infrared therapies. The, most of the frequencies are in the near-infrared range, and that's where the magic comes in. Because when you shine near-infrared light on skin, it causes every cell, the powerhouse, like the mitochondria, to produce ATP. That is energy, adenosine triphosphate. So normally our body eats food to digest it, to convert part of it to ATP. So like hope for cancer, they're telling everyone now, don't take any kind of sauna unless it's a bulb near infrared sauna because cancer cells have less ATP than any cell, you know, any other, you know, cell. And so for their therapy, it's very, very important to get that energy up so the body has the energy to heal. And now uh, one of the other guests that John had was uh, Gerald Pollack. He, dis he discovered that we just don't have water as ice or liquid or vapor. Now there's a fourth phase of water where actually the water becomes thicker and holds a negative charge. And that's how they know now how the energy drives the osmotic flow in our bodies. And this all relates because if we can shine light on our bodies, as Gerald has shown, it can increase that negatively charged water, which is actually a form of energy. You know, you're going to see our world change now because of his discovery, you can put a negative and a positive electrode in water and shine light on it and produce more electricity than it took to shine the light on the water. This is phenomenal. But our body stores that energy too. And, and so with the incandescent bulb sauna, you're getting that 3,000 nanometers of light. So not only is your ATP boosting, you know, your energy supply, with the near infrared because it biologically reacts. Normally, 
far infrared only heats up the water molecules of your body. There is no uh, biological activation of your cells. And so that's why far infrared is a lot different than a near infrared bulb sauna. But also there are saunas out there now because people are realizing that, hey, near infrared is good. They're putting a few LED near infrared in there. So they say, oh, we have full spectrum. It's not the same because of the intensity of the heat lamp bulb. And it's in the shape of a diamond. So you, you, you know, position the top bulb, you know, to shine here. So it's heating up the trunk of your body. And in a normal sauna, the air temperature is about the same all the way around. Now in this type of sauna, it's hottest where the bulbs are focusing on your body and your body goes, Oh, that's hot. So it shunts the blood towards the light, which vasculates your tissues. And so the blood comes closer to the surface so that water can escape your bloodstream to form sweat to cool you down. So in this type of sauna, you simply wipe off the sweat as it forms and then rotate 180 degrees. Because literally, like <laughs> this is so weird. You're going to sweat on one side of your body and the back side will be cold. You'll be going, oh my gosh. And so they just flip around and it does the same thing. And then pretty soon you're sweating everywhere and it, it, it's just phenomenal. So you're getting double the circulation. And, and so that heat stress therapy is great. I mean, I would still do, I mean, I multitask. I have a little cart, you know, and for my coffee enema, I have a clima board. I have sauna lights shining down from the, the, the ceiling. I've got my Tesla high frequency wands I can, you know, do on my body, you know, I mean, so yeah, do light because your body you know, it really has photo nutrition requirements and we're indoors way too much of the time. So we're not getting the natural light. We're not going barefoot outside, getting grounded. I mean, we have this energy flow and we need to supply it to the body. Right. Tell us about the German study that used near infrared. Um, apparently some women were wanting to lose weight. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is even another benefit. <laughs> okay, so we all, you know, are battling this, you know, being a desk jockey, sitting too much, working, not getting our exercise, you know, as we get older, we pack on the pounds. And, you know, it's like we go on these, like me, I, you know, try to do this exercise program or whatever, you know, but my weight fluctuates, you know, up and down, up and down. But so anytime I hear of something that is really good for you. I mean, I don't like these quick drop a whole bunch of weight that's unhealthy for you, you know? So I'm always looking at the healthy way to control weight and lose weight. So I was excited when I read this study. They had 40 women only for a month. I mean, let's say you wanna go on an exercise program for a month, but mm -hmm. you're gonna limit yourself to only three days a week of exercise for 45 minutes. That's it. That's all they did with a study. I mean, I, that would be an excellent program if we could lose lots of weight and fat and contour our bodies. So, so I was excited to see the results. 20 women had near infrared light shining on them, not in a sauna, just in an open room too. That, there's a huge difference. So when you get it in there and you get the sauna aspect with the exercise and the near infrared, oh my gosh. And then 20 didn't have any light and they all rode bicycles for 45 minutes, three days a week for 30 days. They took all their measurements and blood and everything else. And so the group that had the near infrared light shining on them when they were riding their spinner bikes, their blood sugar improved. All of their blood sugar improved. But what was phenomenal is they lost 444% more fat and weight than the other gals who were just riding their bikes. That's like, <laughs> that's literally like doing one exercise and having it equal four times, four exercises. I mean, you know, so it's huge. And then they lost eight centimeters in the circumference 
of their body. And the study found that areas that had extra fat deposits on them, it's like the near infrared heated up the metabolism of those cells. I mean, we have overall, our body has a metabolism, but different cells have their own metabolism. And fat cells have the slowest metabolism because it's like where you have the fat, you know, stored or whatever. It's colder there. If you felt like it doesn't have the circulation and it's just a little slower. <laughs> but when you shine these lights on you and you exercise, even if you hang a pair of lights on the wall, I mean, in front of my tread climber now, I have sauna lights hanging on the wall and I don't do it unless I have the lights on. It's like, why? It's like I get four times the credit for doing it once. And so it actually contoured their bodies because it mobilized the energy stored in the fat to burn and it, and it reduced it, shrank it. And I mean, so it's like, oh my gosh. So they had less pain, better blood sugar, lost all that weight, and they didn't have to go to the gym every single day. <laughs> ticks all the boxes, doesn't it? Yeah. With people that have got darker skin, the people that are blessed with beautiful tans, do they, do their skin, uh, does it get hotter once you're under these lamps? If it's the light, the photons from the light that are causing the heat? Well, you were cutting out there, so I, I'm going to guess at the question, <laughs> but the lights do not give you a suntan. But as far as if you're hot, I mean, it the ambient air temperature is about 20 degrees cooler than a, a far infrared sauna. You know, the, the traditional saunas can get 180, 200 degrees in there where you're pouring water over the rocks. Those have no uh, benefits as far as light activated therapy for a biological response. But again, heat stress therapy is good. But for a lot of people, they can't stay in either one of those saunas because it's so hot when they breathe. And so in a near infrared sauna, you are going to have a cooler air temperature. Even in my sauna with the radiant panels, I mean, I started thinking, hey, we want the light therapy on our skin. But light travels at the speed of light. Let's just not let it leave. Let it just rebounce around and absorb into our skin to maximize the phototherapy. So that's why I think that my sauna doesn't need to have a preheat and people are sweating twice as much in half the time. Yet when they add the breeze safe air purifier, which is increasing oxygen 70 to 118 percent, filling the room with negative ions where you don't even think you're as hot as you are and you're feeling more refreshed. So it's just a great combination to burn those calories, to mobilize that fat, to get the toxins out, to increase circulation. I mean, there's just tons of people that, you know, they've got aches and pains or whatnot. You get under those lamps in that sauna it's like they melt away. And then for the people who are heat sensitive, they'll just start with shining the lights on their body in an open room. And they still get the benefit because that, you know, that biological activation of the cells. Okay. But if someone's got dark skin, does their skin absorb the heat more? Does it reflect less of the light? Um, boy, that's a good question. I mean, I have all kinds of clients and they haven't said one way or another, their, their response is always the same. I'm sweating more, I'm feeling great, I have less pain. So, uh, you know, I haven't noticed any, you know, differences. Okay, can infrared light give you cancer? Uh, not in the near infrared, uh, not in the 550 to 3400 range, no. But the, the one hazard, and, and this is 
controversial because the other manufacturers of near infrared bulb saunas do not recommend eyewear. Now, <laughs> I sold a sauna to an OSHA inspector. And in the workplace, if you expose eyes to near infrared frequencies, you have to wear eye protection because 700 to 1400 nanometers of light cause permanent eye damage. There was actually a study where they blinded rabbits with GE 250 watt heat lamp bulbs. So I couldn't find a pair of glasses that protected that range. And so I actually had a manufactured and FDA approved and they, they kind of wrap around the sides. I don't have a pair here to show you, but what happens is eye tissue heats up faster than any other cell in your body. So the body's smart. It's like, oh my gosh, this is getting hot. I want to protect the retina. So it begins thickening the surface of the eye to shield it from the heat. And mm -hmm. so every sauna that I sell comes with a pair of those glasses to put on there to protect the eyes. But Hope for Cancer in Mexico recommend near infrared sauna therapy only they actually tell you not to do the other saunas some of their patients are calling me and ordering saunas they had been doing a far infrared sauna and hope for cancer said your results aren't good enough you have to switch to a near infrared there's many people out there now that are recommending and near infrared is be being used in cancer therapy even cancer.gov if you go there they're actually shining near infrared light on inoperable tumors and it's causing the tumor cells to die. And mm. so no, near infrared does not cause cancer. Okay, now one of the other topics we're going to talk about is salts and hydration, yes. dehydration. Right. Um, what is, how, would you def how can you define dehydration? How would you define that? Well, there's an excellent book. It, you know, it was written under two different titles. You're not sick, you're thirsty. Or the one about your body's many cries for water. Uh, so dehydration can be chronic or it can be intermittent. But every time you even have intermittent dehydration, your body has to substitute. It has to ration, you know, water in the body. And so dehydration is not measured by how much water you drink. Because a lot of people will drink a lot of water and they're constantly in the restroom just going. It's running right through them. It's actually taking minerals out of their body and they're still dehydrated. So... It's, uh, it, it, as far as dehydration goes, I developed uh, some ultra sensitive pH and urine test strips, a 14 panel, because if you have high specific gravity in your urine, you are gonna be dehydrated. You're gonna have higher amounts of calcium and protein, you know, in your urine, it's going to show that you have kidney stress and things like that. And so I teach people, it's not about the amount of water you're drinking, because you could be drinking the wrong kind of water too. That's another common mistake. But we sell the test strips to verify how hydrated are you? What is the state, you know, of your body? But typically we do want to drink those eight to 10 glasses of water uh throughout the day i was actually dehydrated you know i in the morning i would drink a lot and then i'm on the phone a lot running around taking care of customers and then i'm not drinking water and so when i got the test strips it's like oh my gosh i'm acid i'm dehydrated this is you know horrible and uh my my mom had um just died passed away and it was a super stressful time and so i was fighting an infection it was like this infection i just was doing everything i couldn't figure out what to do and so i had just gotten the test strips and i pulled the test strips and i'm acid and i'm dehydrated 
So I immediately started taking a glass of water and as much healthy salt as I could balance on a toothpick, kind of like using it like a shovel and putting it in my glass of water. And I set a reminder to be drinking water throughout the day. And even the first day, my symptoms started disappearing. By day three, they were completely gone. And I was feeling better. And so I took my ultra-sensitive pH test strips. I was doing that daily. But then after I stayed in that healthy pH range, and I pulled those 14 panel, oh my gosh, my specific gravity was normal. I didn't have high proteins in my urine. I didn't have all the kidney stress, you know, and I wasn't dumping too much calcium. And I was shocked. And then all, a lot of clients that maybe you're having problems with chronic sinus infections or just different infections, you know, we're then getting the test strips and finding out, oh my gosh, we're acid, we're dehydrated. And they start doing a little bit of healthy salt with their water and coming out of it, their problems were going away. And then I read, read that book from Dr. Batman Galish. And it's based on histamines, you know, it's like salt is a water regulator in the body. And uh, if you're dehydrated at any time, it's like your, your cartilage and your knees require a lot of water. But you know, if you're dehydrated, your body won't give it water because bone marrow is more important. And it regulates water by histamines, receptors. And so when you take the salt, it like sucks, it like, it, it like holds the water so it doesn't run through you. And now we know that healthy salt happens to be negatively charged water. So it helps make the easy gel water that helps to hydrate, you know, the body. But taking salt with your water, and you know, I'm not a fan of distilled water or reverse osmosis water because it's blank water. So it's gonna pick up minerals. Yes, it picks up toxins to help people detoxify. But you're gonna take the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's gonna run through you, and it will not hydrate your cells because of the surface tension of the water does not absorb well into the cells. And so you'll be able to tell that with those test strips. And then by adding the healthy salt, you know, it's actually, I should have called it maybe a C complex because it's 25% minerals. And it's got the negative charge with the high pH of 10.72. I actually got to tell you how I found out about it. I was at a trade show. I had my saunas in a booth and there's this guy selling this salt. It was like astronomically expensive. I thought, there's no way. I don't even want to try it. And then he had... Because I was just a connoisseur of salts, you know, uh, real salt, gray salt, Hawaiian, Himalayan. I mean, I had all these salts and I was always using them. And so he had all these glasses of acid water with his pH drops. And he was putting a pinch of all my favorite salts in the glass and it still remained acid. Oh, wow. And then he put a pinch of healthy salt in there and it turned blue. And then I knew, okay, I'm going to do that. So I just don't believe what they say. He told me it had a pH of nine. You know, my third party lab test came up at 10.72. That's very rare that somebody under claims what they have. They're mainly over exaggerating, you know, to make a sale. Mm -hmm. And so I pulled a hair analysis, you know, just a short piece of hair before I started the salt. And I had done this before with like Fiji water where for one month straight, I would drink a liter of Fiji water a day. And I did a hair analysis before, after, and then one month, no Fiji, do another hair test, one month Fiji. And every time I did, drank a liter of Fiji water, toxic metals came pouring out of my body. My energy was better. The body loves Fiji water. So I did the same thing with the salt for a period of six months where I've on and off, on and off, on and off. And the website shows this hair analysis. And it is absolutely amazing because of the mineral analysis, the, the ratios and the, the broad spectrum minerals are special to the body. It's very similar to the Canton uh, marine plasma 
that was used uh, in Spain and in, in France uh, at the turn of the century that was doing miraculous things for people. But it's super expensive, but it's, you know, great stuff. And so, mm -hmm. you know, by taking in that healthy salt, your body just freely lets go. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't have to use cadmium for zinc or lead for calcium anymore or aluminum for magnesium. And so it mineralizes the body. And it's like people don't realize that you can't bat your eyelashes without, without enzymes. And, you know, a lot of people take enzymes. But, you know, every cell in your body has an enzyme binding site. And if it has the right mineral, kind of like OEM car parts, your car has tires, it has a steering wheel, it has a seat. Well, like our body, our thyroid gland has more selenium than any organ in the body. Our bones obviously have more calcium. You know, by design, there is an OEM mineral for every cell for it to work like a new part. And so when the body all of a sudden is presented with the right mineral, it freely gives up the toxins that it's been using. It's kind of like, you know, the j junkyard jalopy that's used in uh, duct tape and bailing water wire to survive. So this salt provides such a diverse blend of minerals that you can't get in any supplement, you know, and we've kind of graduate, you know, gravitated away from using salt. I mean, before refrigeration, everything was packed in salt. Mm. You know, people used to have a lot more sodium. Now, yeah, there's people with high blood pressure and other considerations. That's like a whole nother talk about the salt. But with this being such low sodium in minerals, like for instance, Himalayan salt is one part per million magnesium. Healthy mm. salt is 6,800 parts per million magnesium. And you just go down the list with all the minerals because Himalayan salt is 98% sodium chloride. It's got 0.8% minerals and the difference is sulfur. So you're just not getting very many minerals. So with the salt, what it does is it helps you hold water. It's the negative charge. So it's like the easy water that uh, Dr. Polak discovered. And the neat thing about it is outside of our cells is like an alkaline ocean. So for two acid, you know, we don't get the osmotic flow happening as fast as it should. His discovery showed that with the easy negatively charged water on the outside of the cells, it creates a channel to the inside of the cell where protons flow in. Then the inside, the guys that clean up the molecular debris, they need protons to lower the internal environment pH. So when that internal environment pH lowers and the outside is alkaline, it's, it's, it's like this energy that's how the osmotic flow happens. So you're gonna get better detox when you have a high pH. So that's another reason why it's high pH, negatively charged, it's creating easy water, it's hydrating your body. The near infrared bulb sauna at 3000 nanometers is hydrating your body. So you can actually take a sauna and hydrate your body. And so there's salt has a very important because you're losing electrolytes. There's all these electrolyte drinks out there you can have. Healthy salt is just fabulous. Yeah, it doesn't have glucose in it, but it's got everything else. You can just add a little bit of healthy salt and start slow. Like anybody starting the healthy salt, just what balances on a toothpick and one glass of water, do that for three days. Because there's people that just go, oh, I can use a 16th of a teaspoon three times a day. They'll do it and they'll just detox so much. It's too much too fast. So baby steps on that and work up with it. And when you're doing sauna therapy, you need to replace minerals in your body. And so healthy salt is great for that. It's not for cooking. I mean, you can put it in your food, but if you put healthy salt on your food, it just kind of instantly disappears. But because it's such low sodium, you have to put a whole bunch of it on your food. So uh, also, how many people have problems with gum disease? 
receding gum lines, things like that. I mean, we have microbes in our mouth, but microbes cannot live in a 10.72 pH environment. It can like sterilize your mouth. So it has a sulfury, you know, some people crave the taste of healthy salt. Other people, it's like, oh my gosh, it just it tastes so much sulfur. I can't even hardly drink my water with that. And I go, well, then hide it in your food. Mm. But uh, the uh, healthy salt will have a little bit of a taste. So just keep that in mind. But you go slow with it and make sure you're not going to detox too much. But when you, when you work up with this, like especially if you do a hair analysis, if you've been in a four low pattern or low sodium potassium ratio, just have had some chronic issues that have been going on for years, this is a perfect product to take and then monitor. And if you're not on the hair analysis program, at least get the ultra sensitive pH test strips and the 14 panels so you know how much you need. And then if you're out drinking coffee, eating a lot of grains or dairy, which are acid, you know, and you haven't had all your veggies like you should, you know, uh, then you may need more healthy salt that day. So it, it's a regulator to just kind of keep you in that really nice zone where the body's healthier and can function more normally. Is healthy salt from the ground? Is that dug up from the ground? It is mined from an island in South Korea. So it's, I tested it, it's got zero microplastics, it's got zero pesticides. I spent thousands of dollars on lab tests. Um, the family, it's been in their family for thousands of years and they make this salt, they mine it, they debrine it in the shade and then they rake it, spray it, rinse it, and put herbs and secret ingredients on it for like three and a half years. Then after that, they put it in a special pot and burn it under high flame for days to burn off, you know, impurities and everything like that. And it's like a powder. It's like it just, if, you know, if you're even talking and holding it up, I mean, you'd see it, the, the, the particles float. It, it's such a fine powder. And this isn't to be confused with the nine times roasted salt where they pack like clay and bamboo and it's like a, more of a, a pink color. It, it's not that salt, it's a, it's a totally different. And it's got a definite uh, better mineral profile, pH healing ability with that negative charge. It's, it's all such a special process. Sounds very interesting. It's, so on, on this property, they have a mine and they go, how, how far down would they get the salt? Uh, he, he hasn't told me. I mean, I've asked him a lot of questions, you know, the, the supplier and, uh, you know, it's been in their family for like 2,000 years. They have the mine. They, they do all this special treating of the salt. And so the only recourse I had left was to spend thousands of dollars on the lab test to make sure it didn't have toxic levels of anything in it. That yeah. it really had the pH, that it really had those mineral concentrations. And then, of course, then the testing I did, but you know, as me being my own guinea pig <laughs> with the hair analysis, every time my endocrine system improved, just everything got better when I was, you know, taking the healthy salt. So it's just part of the, the daily routine for us around here. Are there any dangers in what people would call regular salt, salt you buy from the supermarket? Oh, well, mine salt obviously sodium chloride <laughs> you know they have you know of course iodized salt there's a lot of if you search the dangers of iodized salt there's a lot on the internet about why you don't want to do iodized salt i recommend getting your iodine from icelandic kelp that's the purest kelp you know in the world plus it's got all kinds of minerals and vitamins in it so we can do things like that. There is iodine in the healthy salt, but not as a, a therapeutic dose. But yeah, table salt is just really bad for your body. I mean, a lot of it sometimes is bleached and just the processing and everything else, you know, is, is not healthy. 
Um, and as a matter of fact, even some of these other natural supposed salts that are good for you or not good for you. There was a book written, I think in 2003, about how to make Himalayan sole water. Well, one of the test results that I came across, because after I got the test results from Healthy Salt, then I started going, oh my gosh, what salt is good for us? So I started looking at all the test results on all the different salts to find out how much sodium chloride, how many minerals, how much toxins. One of the tests that was done was putting you know, salt in water to find out what the pH would be. Strangely enough, Himalayan salt, when you put it in water, the pH goes lower. It's actually acid at six. And then another measurement that was taken is the ORP value, the oxidant, you know, the, and we want antioxidants, not, you know, oxidizers. But the longer, up to 48 hours that Himalayan salt was left in water, the ORP just raised and raised and raised. And so, I mean, so then I concluded that, okay, the French salt doesn't raise the ORP. It's got a decent pH. It still doesn't have more than 2% minerals, you know. So I was on the hunt for where's a good mineral salt. So I sell the Baja cooking salt because it's the second lowest sodium, second highest mineral salt that I could find in the world that doesn't have a bunch of toxins in it. It's in an area in this estuary where it floods. And I've got lab tests on it where it's got zero microplastics, even though it's coming direct from the ocean and uh, no pesticides or anything like that. So we therapeutically use our healthy salt because we can shift our pH like crazy. And then we can use quite a bit of the Baja cooking salt to get all those minerals because it's low sodium. So really even people with blood pressure issues can do these salts. Wow, okay. So it's a, it's a lot of information to take on board. <laughs> yeah. The thing with uh, common table salt, which I really wished, um, which I was very surprised to hear was the Potassium aluminum silicate that they use as an anti clumping agent. And let's say maybe anti caking agent to make it flow nice through the hole. <laughs> There's oh. even natural sea salts that have that anti caking agent in them, too. So and even that, though you think you're being healthy, you're going to get an anti caking agent. Isn't it criminal? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the Baja salt comes in larger flakes. And so I actually got a Parmesan cheese, you know, or like a pizza shaker thing, you know, because it's got the bigger holes. But yeah, you know, definitely know you're getting something natural <laughs> when it won't come out of the salt shaker. <laughs> They've come to the end of our summer. Is there any piece of advice you'd love to give to our viewers before we Well, I think that with our indoor lifestyles, we're not getting our photo nutrition, we're toxic, and we're dehydrated. I would say 80% of everyone's health problems is they have some degree of dehydration. Yes. And, and I mean, this is everything. I mean, that book from Dr. Batman Galish, everything from asthma, because it's like, you know, you lose more water out your lungs than anything. So people with asthma, it's like most of them, it's just chronic dehydration. So you got to be drinking the right water, spring water. You've got to have the minerals in it, like with the healthy salt, with the high pH, but then you need that photo nutrition, get the, the bulb sauna. So your body's getting the energy, the ATP, it's driving the osmotic flow and it's detoxifying you because every time you breathe, Every time you put skincare products on your body or all the time you're eating food, you're ingesting, inhaling toxins. You have yeah. to be on a constant detoxification program. And so this all works together synergistically uh, to rebuild the body because you have to have energy. 
you know, you have to have minerals. So that's what, what I would say is invest in something that you can use, you know, for a lifetime. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been fantastic having you with us. And uh, yep, once again, we've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you take care.